Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stain Gamers, and welcome. So today we take a look at another modless vanilla project from the Steam Workshop, and this one is absolutely an amazing piece of design and engineering. It's of course another walker. Now this one is designed by Bruce from the Steam Workshop, and he has really thought of some really smart ways of getting walker projects moving at a much higher speed than the ones we've seen in the past. Now what we've got here is we've got some legs that are set up at the front, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how they work. We've got, of course, pistons at the bottom. Now the pistons are going to be used to absorb the shock as this vehicle moves. We've got the joint here itself, so these are going to be pushing along the ground, and we've got a second joint here, and that will allow us to propel and move along. I'll show you exactly how it works in a second. Now we've got the side movement that help us move left and right, and it seems to be a very interesting sort of insect design. It reminds me of some sort of prey mantis as it moves across the ground. We'll hop inside, and as we hop inside, you can see we've got a radar screen on the right. We've got our batteries and information specs, as well as an ammo summary on the left. We've also got crawler controls up at the top left as well. So now we've turned that on, we can actually activate our rotors, and you'll notice as we activate our rotors, it actually turns the systems on. But we can turn the system off if we want to by pressing number two. I'll remove the hood. You can see how the ship has actually stopped in place. Now, if we disable our rotors, you can actually see it just falls back down towards the ground. We'll re-enable them, and we'll get this ship walking. Now, what is quite shocking and exciting about it is how fast this ship actually moves across the ground. You can also turn it very easily using the gyroscopes as we turn over here and get moving in this direction. There is a few banks and clinks, but that is because the pistons are absorbing a lot of that shock. Now, we have got some other options too. So, if I just bring this to the stop, and we press number four, Number four will extend two decoys, and this will actually make the silhouette of this walker much taller. So if someone's trying to actually engage this ship, they'll fire rockets above if they're using automatic turrets. We can also pop that down and up as well. And we can also do something that I really like. This is the jump feature. You can see how it jumps up into the air on these pistons. And it can also walk like this if you so call want it to. See the pistons. It doesn't really work as well. I can see this being just more of a way of getting in and out. Of difficult spots maybe you need to climb up onto a rock you can leap onto it by pressing five like so so you can leap up onto that rock then leap back down very nice little feature we've also got thrusters in case we find ourselves in a situation where we actually need to take off so as we can take off here and move around quite easily we can also drop back down to the ground and continue walking so back to seven and we can reactivate our legs so if you're like me, you're probably wondering what sort of offensive capabilities does this bring to the table. Now on the roof, we have that single rocket launcher. To the left hand side, we have the Gatling gun. So if I can just activate that there, you can see we can fire that. And to the right, we have a double rocket launcher set up in volley fire by hitting number nine. So you can see we can fire two rockets and it is quite close range and rather inaccurate purely because we're moving up and down. So that automatic turret on the top would have to do a lot of the work. But I really like the idea of extending out these pistons as well as having control of these decoys on the back to actually make the silhouette a bit harder to hit with them automatic turrets a very nifty idea indeed and i guess that could also work as a self-writing system if you do flip this walker over so i've taken the walker over to the alien world now there's two reasons i've done this i want to see if i can fight any of them bugs and secondly i want to do a little bit of off-road testing so remember, we do have the thrusters, so if we do get in a spot of bother, we can activate them and just thrust away. So technically, we don't even need to try and go over this dangerous strain. We can just activate our thrusters and hop down. But I just wanted to see what it was actually capable of if it got stuck on something like this with the rocks. So there you go. You can see it's stuck, and straight away, it's, it's not going anywhere at all. So I guess we could disable our systems like so, activate at number seven, and just fly over it if we don't completely crash into the ground. We'll see how, we'll see how stuck we are first. Seems like we're pretty stuck. Let's activate number four. We've got that up and we can activate five to extend the pistons and that should give us a little bit of lift. There we go. So we can actually move over to this terrain and then walk below. So it's, it's a pretty nice idea. I really like the addition as well as the thrusters as well because it allows you just to really adapt to the situation you find yourself in. So now that we're getting down here, we can re-enable our other settings. So back to a number five. So we track them in. Oh, we're going a little bit fast, a little bit dangerous here. See if we can sweep around into this area. It doesn't fly very well, I'll tell you that. Right, don't hit that. Ah! Okay, seems like we're okay. We'll disengage our number seven, and we should be able to keep walking. Looks like the pistons have done their job in absorbing a little bit of that impact when we came down hard on that landing. So it seems like it's quite a functional little device. Definitely the rover I would turn to if I wanted a walker-based design. 
So I thought it'd be a good idea to do a little bit of bug hunting in this ship just to see how it would behave, see if it would actually be able to take out other bugs. There is a few problems with it. I've noticed that the bugs go straight underneath it, and when they're underneath it, they're very hard to get out. So we can press free stop the actual rover itself. You can see we've got the bug trap there. Uh, we can try to jump away, but what's going to happen is it'll just come out somewhere else. So let's actually reactivate our rotors and try to get a little bit of machine gun on this bug. No, oh, we missed him. He's got back underneath us. We can try jumping out of it, maybe. Oh, we're jumping out. I think we lost a wheel in the process. Maybe hop back down, crush him underneath. No, he's escaped away. Okay, there he is. He's popping up over this side, so let's get our gun on him. There we go. We got him finally. Finally.